The first case is a 54-year-old male with right eye swelling. So two images from a CT scan. Here's a coronal image. So which of the following is the best diagnosis? Number one, a subperiosteal abscess, a dermoid cyst. Number three, a mucosal. Number four, a dacrocystocele. And number five, a capillary hemangioma. You can start the timer. So again, we have the two images, both the axial and coronal images. Number one is a periosteal abscess. Number two is a dermoid cyst. Number three, a mucosal. Number four, a dacrocystocele. And finally, number five, a capillary hemangioma. Okay, so everyone says dacrocystocele. And that's the answer. So if you look at the axial image, we can see this cystic lesion right along the medial canthal region. Again, what's really key is this coronal image. All of the following are true except number one, presents as bluish medial canthal mass. Number two, third most common cause of neonatal nasal obstruction. Number three is a poorly defined cystic medial canthal mass. Number four, coronal plane best to demonstrate contiguity with the nasolacrimal duct. And finally, number five, hyperintense on the T2 weighted images due to fluid contact. You can start the timer. I feel like this is a boxing match. <laughs> and this is round two. So again, presents as bluish medial canthal mass. So the most of you responded almost over half is a poorly defined cystic medial canthal mass. So that's the correct answer. Most of the time, these are very well defined. So let's talk about a dracrocystocele for a minute, and that's uh, canalization of the ectoderm into the nasolacrimal duct. Typically occurs at the third month. They have two sites where they may be, um, there may be incomplete canalization. Um, the most uh, frequent is the junction of the nasolacrimal duct and the nasal mucosa, typically at the uh, level of the inferior turbinate. The second most common site is the common lacrimal uh, caniculus at the, at the level of the lacrimal sac. They typically have two types of presentation in the uh, congenital form. They're typically in infants, and these typically are the most common cause of abnormalities of the lacrimal system, but the third most common cause of neonatal obstruction. And again, they're going to form as a cystic dilatation of the nasal lacrimal apparatus, usually secondary to the obst obstruction. In the adults, these are the acquired forms, and this may be secondary to previous trauma, nasolacrimal duct injury, uh, secondary to sinus, or some post-inflammatory or neoplastic process. And you have to remember that they can get super-infected, so you want to look out for inflammatory changes. So here are some uh, other examples. So this is a subperiosteal abscess. The key with a subperiosteal abscess, you want to see the adjacent ethmoid sinus disease. You can see the uh, abscess within that medial canthal region with the rim enhancement. You want to see some defect within your laminar papyrusia, again, producing this cystic type of uh, uh, appearance. Often the medial uh, rectus muscle will be pushed, and you can see inflammatory changes along that extra conal fat. This is a patient with a frontoethmoidal mucosal. This is the ethmoidal component to it. You can see that the walls are thinned out, and they are bulging into the medial canthal uh, region. Again, mucoceles are secondary to an obstruction of the uh, drainage uh, pathway, and they typically are, can be uh, fluid-filled. And so the key here, again, is to see the thinning out of the bone. And if you remember that the center of this is within that anterior ethmoid air cell. This is a typical dermoid. They typically occur in the supralateral region of the orbit. They can calcify and they can have bony scalloping, again, typically at the frontozygomatic uh, uh, region. On MR, they may have uh, fluid, flu uh, fluid fat levels. They're typically hyperintense on the T1-weighted images. Um, and again, it's important to remember that they can occur in non-typical locations um, within the uh, orbital region, and they can occur along the medial canthal uh, or the medial uh, portion. 
This is a neonate who presented with a supramedial uh, uh, orbital lesion. You can see on the T2 weighted images, not too hyper intense when we compare it to uh, CSF on the soft tissue window, uh, iso intense uh, to brain parenchyma, avidly enhancing. This was a capillary hemangioma. They are going to present in that perinatal period, typically at around uh, age one, and they often involute uh, within a year or two. Uh, just briefly on the anatomic classification of orbital lesions, remember retrobulbar uh, masses we can divide into a uh, conal region. We can, in, within the intraconal space itself and the extraconal uh, space, and there are a lot of lesions which can occur um, extraconal. Uh, I just uh, showed you a, a few um, examples. Okay, the second case that we have is a 38-year-old female with vision changes and facial asymmetry. So here's a CT through the orbital region. Some additional images, both uh, bone windows and soft tissue windows through the facial region. So which one of the following is the cause of this patient's enophthalmos? Number one, breast cancer metastasis. Number two, silent sinus syndrome, orbital floor fracture, max three sinus hypoplasia, or orbital varix. If you can start the timer. So again, breast cancer metastases, silent sinus syndrome, orbital floor fracture, max three sinus hypoplasia, or varix. So you can see about 60% said silent sinus syndrome, which is the uh, correct answer. Which imaging finding best describes this entity? Number one, the maxillary sinus is underdeveloped and aerated. Maxillary sinus walls are retracted with diminished sinus volume. The uncinate process is medialized and the medial meatus is narrowed. Maxillary sinus floor is demineralized and dehiscent. Again, in axial and coronal images. If you can start the timer. Maxillary sinus is underdeveloped and aerated. Maxillary sinus walls are retracted with diminished sinus volume or uncinate process and medialized and the middle meatus is narrowed. So you can see most of you said the maxillary sinus walls are retracted with uh, diminished sinus volume. So that's what we can see on this uh, axial image where the lateral walls retracted. We can see that the retromaxillary fat is enlarged. It's typically the orbital floor which herniates downward into the maxillary sinus and that results in the patient's uh, symptomatology often presenting with uh, a vision type of uh, pain or changes. The other key is to see this middle meatus which is enlarged and the uncinate process is typically lateralized. So silent sinus syndrome or chronic maxillary sinus atelectasis was first coined by So Parker in 1994. These patients present with painless and progressive enophthalmos. They can have diplopia, facial asymmetry, and pain. This patient are not um, originally presented to her uh, uh, physician on the outside, and then she did an intranet search and looked up silent sinus syndrome, and then finally presented to us. They may or may not have uh, sinus symptoms. The etiology of this is believed to be from, sec uh, from negative intrasinus uh, pressure. And again, on imaging, what are we looking for? Well, we want to make sure that the sinus is fully developed and opacified, as opposed to a underdeveloped um, sinus. And again, the uncinate process is retracted and lateralized. The infundibulum tends to be occluded. The middle meatus is enlarged. And again, we're going to see the inward retraction of the sinus walls and the resulting downward traction, retraction of the orbital floor. Surgery is to reestablish drainage. The damage is done. So the purpose of surgery really is to prevent further asymmetry and prevent some of the symptomatology.